So I got a power panel over here and I got three phases of power coming in, orange, blue, and green. So when I close this breaker, well, that motor over there gives those three phases. Same thing, when I close the breaker over here, this breaker over here, I get power to the oven. If I take a multimeter and I read the power between that lead and the ship's ground, I will get 220 volts. Now, that is assuming that this is a 440 volt system. The difference of potential between this case, this would be Charlie phase, and the ship is 220 volts. The top, the top phase would be alpha phase. The difference of potential between that one and the ship is 220 volts. Now, the difference of potential of the Charlie phase, this one over here, to the ship, it is also 220 volts. But they are in different phases. This is phase Charlie, phase Alpha, and phase Bravo. If I compare phase Alpha to phase Charlie, I will get 440 volts because that's the difference in voltages on those. So between this phase and the middle phase, which is Bravo, it's 440. From the bottom one, which is Charlie, and the top one, I will also get 440 volts. So when you read in voltage across any of the phases, you will get the magic 440. When you do one phase to the ship, it will be 250. The ship is, to be, uh, is supposed to be ungrounded, meaning that none of the wires will ever electrically touch the ship, at least on their ideal conditions. But nonetheless, because there is a lot of wire that runs throughout the ship, there is an induced voltage due to the capacitive effect between the conductor that is inside and then the outside of the conductor there is this plastic, which is an insulator, and then the ship itself is a piece of metal. Remember when I talk about capacitors, capacitors, they have a dielectric, which is in the center, which is an insulator, and on the top you got a plate, or two plates, that are separated by the insulator. That's what we got over here. The ship itself is a plate. The conductors inside there is, well, it's a plate, it's just a very long conductor, and then the sheave or the insulation of the conductor, it functions as a dielectric. So there is a big capacitor, per se, between all of those faces and the ship. And because of that, now you actually get a difference of potential that is actual real power between one of these faces and the ship. I'm going to stop and I'm going to show you how I put a contactor connected between one phase and the ship and how the contactor will try to get energized because it does have 220 volts going through it. Let's look at it. Gonna energize it. Take readings. De energize. Now, after we saw that, what that means to you is that if you go out there and you touch one of those lines of faces, you are gonna get shocked by 220 volts in this case. Now, let's look at another scenario. What happened if, see this wire goes through this bulkhead and it has insulation, but what if the wire gets, or not the wire, but the insulator gets caught and it starts touching the ship? Well, as soon as that happens, since the ship is metal, that wall over here, or that bulkhead, will be energized with, in this case, Bravo face, because that's what we have. So notice how I put the blue of the B face in the ship. So now the ship, because of this ground over here, is at Bravo potential. What that means is that these voltages in here now change. Since the ship is at Bravo potential, what's the difference between A, which is the ship now, I'm sorry, B, which the ship is at B potential, and C, 
this will change to 440 volts. Now, let's look at this one over here. The ship is at B potential, and we are comparing it to A potential. So now this one would be 440 volts. But now, let's look at this one. This phase is B potential, and the ship is B potential. So the difference of potential would be zero volts. If you ever see one phase to ground, zero volts, that means it's grounded. Now, what happens if you are standing on a ship barefooted and you touch the, B con the Charlie conductor, the C phase? Now, well, we just learned that now you're not getting shocked, not by 220, but you're getting shocked by 400, 440 volts. That is definitely makes it dangerous in that situation. But now, that's not really what we're concerned for grounds because most people don't touch those wires. What we're concerned is that now the ship is at B potential. Now, what happens? So, this oven over here is the one that this cable is the one that's grounded on B potential. But what happens if this motor, what happens if this phase because we neglected this ground and we didn't fix it. What happens if this phase over here now gets grounded? Well, as soon as it gets grounded, now we got alpha phase meeting B potential because the ship is at B potential. Immediately, it's going to be a short right here, and now this short is gonna come alive. I'm sorry, the one for the uh, B phase, and we're gonna have a class Charlie fire both here and here. That's why whenever we get grounds on board the, the system or the distribution system, we got to clear them as fast as we can before another ground shows up to prevent these massive class Charlie fires and equipment getting damaged. On board ship, we got 110 volts too, but the way how we get that power is via step down transformers from the 44. 440 volt distribution system. So as you can see over here, we got three phases coming in, 440, and we got them connected to a delta, delta configuration of transformers. Here is a quick snapshot of these connections over here. These are my primary windings. I, this one, that one, and that one. And these are my secondary windings, which is this one, this one, and this one. Let's look at this winding over here, which is primary. So this winding over here, notice that here it is connected to the primary winding or the secondary transformer and exactly we got over here, one meets two, one meets two. How about the second one, this one over here? Two meets three and two meets three. How about this one over here? Three also meets one and that's what we got over here. So this side is connected in delta, and this side, as you can see, is also connected in delta. As you already imagined, the ratio of these transformers are four to one. So the voltage over here will be always four times less than this one. Now, as far as current, this is gonna be four times as large as this one. In a moment, I'm gonna show you. Now, keep in mind that if I get a ground here, I would be able to detect it in the 440 three-phase distribution system. But if I get a ground here, it would be invisible from this side of the view, from this side of the uh, distribution system. So a ground on the 110 side, you will never see it in a 440 distribution system. Power panels that have that are fed from this distribution bank have their own ground indicators. Here I got a 120 volt power panel and I got a light indicator. If I press the button and if one of those lights would have gone out, I wouldn't have a ground in that phase. But this one, it passes the, the test. Here I got the electrical schematic for the ground detector lamp circuit that I just show you. Each lamp is attached to the secondary of the isolation transformer that we have there. 
And then also, this is the push button over here that is connected to the center. The lights are connected in Y, as you can see. So, the if Alpha and Bravo have power, well, these two lights are gonna come on because power will go through both of the uh, primary of these two transformers for, and that will energize the particular transformer's light. Same thing between B and uh, C, and there is always gonna be electrons exchanging between all the different phases. Now, as long as power stays on, and if I press the button, now I put the potential of ground here. What happens if B was grounded? Well, if, if B was grounded in this case, power will go through here, it will go to here, and now I will have the same potential here as I will have over here. That would mean that this, the total power across this transformer will be zero volts, and this light will be off. The other two lights will become brighter because now we got uh, C potential here, so now the difference of potential between this point and this point will be 440 volts. When the system is working like it's supposed to, that there is no ground, the, the difference of potential between one point and one phase, it only will be 220 volts. Transformers, transformer banks of three always are connected in a delta delta because if in case one transformer burns up, the other two are able to carry 73% of the load or the full load of all three transformers. There is another type of connection that could have been done that is the Y, but like I said, we really stick with the delta. The output voltage on a delta delta is pretty constant. So if I had 110 volts over here, this transformer will give out also 110 volts. A current, if I got a current of 100 amps over here, the actual current going through this uh, line out there is actually 1.7 times, 73 times the line current. So I'm actually delivering 173 amps going out to the load in all three um, phases. So because of that is why if I were to lose one of them, I still would get a 73% of max of, of load that I can provide only with two transformers. Now, I did some changes over here and notice that now my secondary is a uh, Y connection and it looks like a Y over here, uh, actually an inverted Y, that's how I drew it. And notice that in here I took the bottom of the secondaries and I actually short them out. I actually meant to do this one opposite, uh, this one over here like this and then orange would have been that one. So. What that accomplishes is that now it gives me the ability to add voltage. And what I mean by that is that even in each phase, I still get 110 volts. But if I go from, from here to here, it's 110 volts. But now there is a fourth line, which is called a neutral. So any phase to neutral is 110 volts. But any phase between each other, now they add the voltage adds. And it's going to be close to 200 volts over here. We do that type of connections whenever we need to uh, give power to places like transformer, uh, I meant to say uh, washers and dryers, uh, that they need a special 220 volts, and this is a quick way to accomplish it. So now between this phase and this phase, we could get as high as 210 volts. And sometimes that's desirable. Now, if one of these transformers goes out, definitely we're not gonna have 73% of the power out there. That was an advantage only for the delta, delta, but this is, I'm talking about delta Y. And the current, if I got 100 amps over here, that means the line is only getting 100 amps. Just the voltage is the one that is additive for the Y configuration.